Up to this point, widgets are pretty simple. If we see one, we know what its state is. We have a text view, it's got some text in it. We have a button, it's got a button in it. So there isn't too much left to the imagination. Uh, slider is on or off. Everything about these widgets is visible all the time. The, this changes when we're dealing with lists because lists contain many elements. They're not like a slider or a button or a text view. Only some of these elements of a list are on the screen at any one time. And so there are two important questions. How do we deal with many items? That's weird. And how do we display lists efficiently? And unfortunately, um, we have to sort of deal with both of these questions at once because we are going to look at recycler views. Um, and recycler views um, address both issues in slightly different ways. So there are going to be a bunch of uh, pictures and the pictures sort of depict some of the elements of a recycler view. And it shows you different ways that you can think about them because uh, there are a couple of pieces to recycler views. They're not, they're not so simple. There is a layout manager, which is somewhat straightforward. Layout manager is like linear or a grid. And I think that's those are the only two layout managers I ever use. There are a couple of, a couple of other fancier ones actually. Uh, that, that, that can be a, a little bit useful. And, you know, managers can nest, you can have a horizontal layout inside of a vertical layout, you know, the, things can get uh, complicated. That's, that's one of the nice things about recycler views, but uh, at, at its base, most of the time we're gonna be using a linear layout manager. And as I say, occasionally sort of a grid, not so bad. Um, the thing to really wrap your mind around when it comes to a list displaying many items is that there is an adapter and the adapter sort of sits between the recycler view, which is in control of what's on the screen and the data set, which is usually like a long list. And, you know, there's a data set, there's like a, maybe a, a network service that's out there. That's not really the data set we're talking about. Once we've fetched a bunch of data from the network, uh, it's residing in our memory. That's really the data set we're interested in. That's like a, a list that's in memory. So, we have many, many list items in memory, like a hundred, hundreds. We only have a small number on the screen at once. And the adapter comes between the full list and what's on the screen. Okay, so, you know, you might just be rebelling against this at some point and be like, hey, can I just have like a list, you know, um, and, and just be simple, like sort of like a, a button view, but like a list view. And in fact, there was a list view and it tried to be simple, but things didn't go well. Basically, the list view is this incredibly core data structure that is just so important. Everybody wants to do something fancy with it. And so uh, we have recycler views which are a little bit more complicated. And I used to teach list views and, and then I went to recycler views, but I, I was afraid that you just see too many APIs, it's just confusing. So we're gonna jump into recycler views directly, even though recycler views are a little more complicated than list views. And uh, you know, the, so we, you know, we have these layout managers, which are sort of part of the recycler view. That's not so bad. There's the adapter, which is where a lot of, a lot of action happens. And then the, the adapter has these view holders and that gets a little confusing. And then in the activity, we have, you know, the data before, I was talking about this, the data in memory, and then we're gonna see, uh, there are gonna be some uh, variables, you know, where we have adapters, the recycler view, the layout manager, you see that all in the activities. So it's just another way of sort of conceptualizing uh, the relationship between all these pieces. Okay, so yeah, life is short, lists are long. Uh, we used to have, when you have a text view, there's this property called text, and then, you know, you assign a string to that text. What could be easier? So what about a recycler view? Well, a recycler, a recycler view has a list of things. So how do we assign to the list? Well, you might say, okay, well, just like we grab this text view, just like we grab this text view, we're going to grab this recycler view. 
and there's going to be some property like list. And then, I don't know, I want to get to the first element of that list. So maybe I'll pretend it's an array or something. And, uh, you know, I'll assign it to a string. It's like a, a list that, that displays a, a bunch of strings. This is not how things work. But the reason that I, I'm going through this is, you know, in order to build your own understanding, I want you to feel confused at first. I want you to sort of struggle with the concept of what we're actually even doing. Because what we're doing is we are trying to represent uh, a, an element that has multiple pieces. So there's multiple pieces to this list, but only some of those pieces are visible at once. So that's, uh, you know, that, that's sort of a new thing for us. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, now here's sort of a, a better model for how this works. Uh, here we have a list that's in memory and you know, we're not being super colony. We don't have like Val here, but we have a list of strings and that's all in memory. And then th maybe there's something sort of representing the, the screen view. Uh, and you know, that looks like an array and we can assign different parts of the array, different parts of the list as the user scrolls around. And this, this is a little bit closer to what, what we're, what we're going to, but of course, once we give you the sort of concrete syntax, some of this, uh, intuitive appeal is going to be lost. So this is why I'm, I'm introducing it this way. I want you to sort of see like, okay, the way we manage this is we have a list that has everything. And then we copy elements of this single static list in memory into parts of the screen as the user scrolls. So dynamically, the screen view is going to be changing and it's going to be changing based on the contents of this list in memory. Okay. So let's sort of take a step back and now really try to break it down in terms of uh, a level of understanding that we can use in our program. So first of all, list, blah, 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 a list of what? What is a list on a, on a phone screen in Android? And the answer to that is it's a sequence of rows. Okay. And what's a row? A row is just a layout. So sort of just like, you know, an, an activity has a layout. You put you, an X and you put a, uh, your layout for a row in an XML file. And it can be a linear layout, a horizontal linear layout with a, a, a picture and text. Right? That's a fine row. Or just how about just a linear layout with some text? Right? That's, that's a fine row. But the point is we do have a layout job when we want to do a list view. We need to lay out a row. All right. When I have this XML file, how am I going to draw a row on the, on the screen? Well, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do this new operation called, oh, no, sorry. It's not a new operation. This is going to use this old operation inflate and you're going to inflate uh, a view binding object. And, you know, we've seen these view binding objects before when we were laying out the contents of our activities. And so if you have, you know, row.xml, the compiler, because we asked it to, builds a view binding object, which because this is called row, the object is called row binding, and it has this, you know, um, capitalization. So the compiler generates uh, this binding object, and that we are going to inflate that binding object. And that's how we're going to get the views for the row on the screen. The thing about inflation is it's expensive. It's expensive because you're turning this XML file, which is just this data specification into a whole bunch of objects in memory. And you got to create the objects and initialize them. It's all, it's a whole rigmarole. So because inflation is expensive, we want to recycle. So what are we recycling? We are recycling these view binding objects. And the way we're recycling them is we're putting them in these things called the view holders. And then the runtime is going to tell us, Hey, the user is scrolling. I need new content in my view holder. And this is the thing we talked about before. Whereas if there are only, you know, eight elements that are visible at once on the screen, we only need eight view holders. So let's, let's take a look at this a little bit and, and sort of, you know, talk about this, uh, recycling. It's called a recycler view. What, what are we recycling? So here we're scrolling through a bunch of images and there's a little bit of text here too. And as we scroll up, 
this view binding object is going to get recycled into uh, uh, this pool of view holders. And then it's going to get reused during an, ele- an, an, an operation called binding, where we are going to bind it to a new list element. So this list element goes away, this view holder object gets recycled, and then it gets uh, rebound to a new element. This might sound a little confusing. Again, the most important things to keep in mind is we have a very long list of data items, but we have a short list of view holders whose contents are dynamically changing as the user scrolls. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Now we're gonna get into some concrete syntax. So we have in our program, in our activity somewhere, eventually it's gonna be in this thing called a view model, but we'll get there. Uh, we're gonna have a list. And that list is, you know, a list of data items, and it can be long, it's 100. And, you know, there's some, we, we call a repository sort of a data source, you know, like the network is a repository or a database is a repository. So we're going to, we're going to, you know, use this programming uh, pattern a lot. So I'm introducing it here, even though it doesn't, you know, you know really need repository, but, um, you know, a repository to fetch data, and then that's going to give us those lists. So, you know, think of it as like a long list of, of Reddit posts. And the thing is, you know, 100 and 200 Reddit posts don't fit on your screen at once. Uh, in this case, only eight items fit on the screen. So we only need eight view holders to manage those row views, okay? And then we're gonna uh, define this API with the Android runtime. And the Android runtime is going to need us to inflate and to bind. And inflate means to create a view for an on-screen row, you know, that's usually a, actually a view holder that's holding a, a, a view binding object. And the, the bind is put uh, the contents of an element in the list into a view holder. And unfortunately, the, the word bind shows up here in two different ways. And so um, it can be a little confusing. There's view binding, which is just how we get the layout elements that we made in our XML. That's view binding. Then in a recycler view, there's this operation called bind. And bind is about um, writing new contents into these view holder objects as the user scrolls so that they see different um, elements in your list. All right, so here's uh, as, as concrete as we're gonna get before we actually look at the code when we do the demos. Okay, so uh, row.xml, it doesn't have to be called row, it can be called, you know, foo, it can be called uh, whatever, color card, I think, in your in your flip classroom. So row.xml has a row layout. Point is, some XML file has your layout, and that's gonna have, you know, as I said, maybe a linear layout. It's, usually rows are not super complicated. I mean, a Reddit post is like somewhat complicated. It's got some pictures, it's got, um, you know, some numbers, it's got some, some text, uh, text views. Um, so there's an XML file and the compiler is going to generate a view binding object. And that's how we're going to interact with the row layout. Now, if I want to create a recycler view, I need a recycler view dot adapter. And here is the declaration of a recycler view adapter. And it inherits from recycler view dot adapter. And that's a parameterized class. And it is parameterized by this view holder, VH, uh, recycler view adapter dot VH, which is actually an inner class where I'm, I'm defining recycler view adapter, and then I'm using recycler view adapter that should look like sort of a recursive use. But this dot VH instead, instead of sort of recursive, it's sort of recursive, but you know, uh, even though I haven't finished the definition of this class, I'm telling you that there's a class inside this class uh, called the view holder. And that's, you might not have seen this before, an inner class. I think Java has nested classes also, but there's an inner class called the view holder, and that takes this view binding object. So we, we shove the view binding objects into the view holder. Uh, and we do that by grabbing, you know, the root, because um, the root 
is the, the base view of a view binding object that has all of the contents of the, uh, of the view. So, you know, when I say row binding dot root, this has all of the elements. It's got the layout, it's got a uh, text view, it's got the image view, whatever happens to be in my row uh, is gonna be contained in this root view. So we're creating a view holder object and we are initializing it using this uh, object we got from uh, view binding uh, using the root view. And then we are only going to inflate enough rows to fit on the screen and the inflation happens in onCreate view, view holder, and that's a callback that the uh, Android will, will call us for. So in onCreate view holder, you're gonna see a call to inflate. And then as the user scrolls, we need to dynamically um, change the contents of these view holder objects. And that's this bind operation. And there's a callback on bind view holder, and it's giving me the old view holder and it's saying, hey, you know what I want you to put in this old view holder? I want you to put the contents for this position, which is like position 100 in your list. And I want you to put 100 in your view holder because the user is scrolling across item 100. All right, they started at item zero, they've been scrolling, 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 and now they're at item 100. So put the data for item 100 into the view holder. Okay, I'm trying to get you, you know, psyched up for this. Hopefully it's sort of making sense and then when we look at the code, you know, it will become even more sense. So one more zoomed out view here. We've got a data source, you know, coming in over the network, database, files or something. We've got some images, we have some captions. There's the sort of long list here. There's an adapter which sees both the list and it sees the screen, which is represented by the sequence of view holder objects. And as the user scrolls, they change the adapter changes the contents of view holders based on the underlying list. Okay, so I think that's that's about it. Here's the the, the sort of glossary, everything sort of on one page. You know, we have a layout, which is just an XML file, it describes a row. We have an adapter which generates views for on-screen rows from the full list. So it sees the entire list. It also sees uh, what's on screen and it sort of adapts between those two. When we talk about the position, we're usually talking about the position of a data item within the full list. So that's, uh, we need to know where we are in the full list when we're uh, updating the screen. Inflation, uh, that's this process of going from an XML data file to an actual view, which we can send to the Android runtime to display on the screen. And this process is expensive and we use view binding to do inflation. And so we want to uh, only inflate as many view holder objects as we need, and then we're gonna change their contents. So sorry, we actually uh, inflate and create view binding objects, but then we, we put the view binding objects inside a view holder. And so uh, there's one view holder for uh, every on-screen row. And then we rebind the view holders by putting data from the list. So for list element X goes in the view holder when the user scrolls to element X. And then finally for uh, recycling, what are we recycling? The view holders are reused as the user scrolls. That minimizes the number of uh, um, XML files we have to inflate, and it uh, it also uh, saves a lot of CPU and memory. Um, so th this reads a little funny, but it's we are minimizing the uh, calls to inflation because calls to inflation take lots of CPU and memory. So there we have it. Uh, hopefully you have some sense of where we're going. It might be a little bit unclear, but now we're going to look at the code, and everything is going to get much more clear.